Hey, push students, let's cover everything you need for period two. Before we start, print out the free speed review sheet to help you follow along with this video. It's free and you can find the link in the description below. Right now, look at unit two. Circle any people, events, vocab, things that you might not quite remember that you need to focus on as we review. Once you're confident that you've mastered a topic, you can check it off and move on to the next. All right, here we go. Like we talked about in unit one, the Spanish colonized Central and South America and the Caribbean. They mined silver and established sugar plantations and exploited the labor of natives and Africans. The Spanish monarch heavily controlled New Spain and forced Catholic conversion on the natives. They sent mostly male conquistadors who often they were married with native women. The French, on the other hand, focused on finding the Northwest Passage and waterways like the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River. New France spanned from Canada down to Louisiana, but was sparsely populated. They had trade relations with the natives too, which were much friendlier than other colonizers. Like the Spanish, they were also Catholic and sent Jesuit missionaries. Like the French, the Dutch also focused on the Northwest Passage, establishing the colony of New Amsterdam. They also traded with natives, but were not as focused on religious conversion or subjugation. Finally, the English settled in families and sought permanent settlements. The English enjoyed greater freedom from the crown, were religiously diverse, even had a great degree of social mobility. English population also grew quickly, which caused conflict with Native Americans. Next, let's look at the British colonial regions. First, the Chesapeake, which included Virginia and Maryland. The first British settlers arrived at Jamestown seeking profit. They were funded by a joint stock company, and after experiencing multiple setbacks, leaders like John Smith and John Rolfe helped the colony thrive. They made massive profits by growing tobacco and plantations, which will lead to the growth of the planter class and a reliance on slave labor. The first elected legislative body called the House of Burgesses was founded in Virginia in 1619 and will serve as an example of colonial government going forward. Maryland was founded as a refuge for Catholics by Lord Baltimore. Like Virginia, its economy was based on tobacco farming and slave labor. Maryland also passed the Act of Toleration, which guaranteed religious freedom for all Christians. Next is New England, which includes Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. The first settlers in New England were pilgrims who arrived at Plymouth. They signed the Mayflower Compact, establishing self-government for the colony. Plymouth was eventually absorbed into the Massachusetts Bay Colony. John Winthrop was its first governor and described the colony as a city upon a hill, a model religious community. The Puritans were extremely strict, and Roger Williams, Annie, and Hutchinson were exiled for challenging religious and political leaders. Also, the infamous Salem witchcraft trials took place in the colony, highlighting the tensions and superstitions of the time. Education was highly valued in Massachusetts Bay, and the economy was based on trade and lumbering. Those that were exiled from Massachusetts Bay often went to Rhode Island, which was founded on the premise of religious tolerance. Next, the middle colonies of Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York, and New Jersey. Pennsylvania was a proprietary colony founded by William Penn, a Quaker who believed in religious tolerance, friendly relations with natives, and opposed slavery. Pennsylvania was economically diverse and known as the breadbasket because it grew crops like wheat and barley. The middle colonies were also ethnically diverse, attracting German and Scots-Irish immigrants. Finally, the southern colonies included North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. North Carolina was characterized by small, independent farms, but South Carolina had lucrative rice and indigo plantations, a reliance on slave labor, and a large port city in Charleston. The last colony to be founded was Georgia by James Oglethorpe. The colony served as a buffer colony to protect the British colonists from Spain and Florida. Next, let's talk about trade. The British colonies were founded according to the theory of mercantilism, where a country becomes wealthy by exporting more than it has to import. Under this theory, the British colonies became part of a trade network known as the Triangular Trade that took place between Europe, Africa, and the Americas. To better control colonial trade, the Crown passed a series of navigation acts, but these were rarely enforced in a policy known as salutary neglect. The colonists enjoyed this economic freedom and made personal profit through smuggling. Next, labor in the colonies. The first laborers in the British colonies were indentured servants. These laborers agreed to work for an individual who would pay their way, and they were usually contracted for between seven and ten years. The first African laborers arrived on the coast of Virginia in 1619. Bacon's rebellion aided in the switch to African slave labor, as Nathaniel Bacon led an uprising of landless whites against Virginia Governor William Berkeley. As the number of enslaved laborers increased, slave codes were often passed, especially in colonies where the slave population was high. But enslaved workers attempted to fight back by breaking tools, faking illness, and even revolt. One example was the Stoner Rebellion in South Carolina in 1739, which was the largest slave insurrection in the 13 colonies, resulting in the tightening of slave coats. Next, Native American conflicts. Differences over culture and land use led to frequent and violent conflicts between British settlers and Native Americans. First, remember the Powhatan Uprising that occurred in 1622 in the Virginia colony. When a new chief of the Powhatan Confederacy took over, he believed war between the two groups was inevitable, resulting in attacks on English settlements along the James River. King Philip's War was one of the deadliest conflicts between natives and British settlers, and eventually led to the end of resistance of natives in New England. Another conflict that occurred was the Pueblo Revolt, which happened between the Spanish settlers in the American Southwest and the Pueblo. Finally, the religious movement called the Great Awakening. The first Great Awakening was a religious revival that occurred in the American colonies during the 1730s and 1740s, caused in part because of a drop in church attendance and Jonathan Edwards' sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Another leader, George Whitefield, traveled throughout the colonies, preaching to huge crowds at events called camp meetings. The first Great Awakening applied to all people, regardless of their 
their socioeconomic status. But it also created divisions between the old lights who resisted the revival and the new lights who embraced it, leading to the formation of new denominations like the Baptist and Methodist churches. The Great Awakening had a huge impact on colonial society as it led to separation from the Church of England and encouraged colonists to question British authority. So come exam day, what questions should you be able to answer? For causes, focus on causes and effects of the system of mercantilism and the triangular trade, especially on the culture of the colonists. And make sure that you focus on the causes of British colonization. Some were profit motivated, but others were motivated by religious freedom. Finally, you could be asked about the effects of the First Great Awakening, especially how it helped encourage colonists to question British authority. Also for continuity and change, focus on the changes that took place after Bacon's Rebellion, like the switch to using slave labor over indentured servants. Finally, for comparison questions, asking to compare the colonizers or to compare the British colonial regions appear all over the exam. Check out the APUSH Ultimate Review Packet for more help. We've got timelines, study guides, and essay help. Follow the link in the description below to get a free preview. And if you think this video was helpful, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.